So we're back in Maya now. We've exported all the uh, geometry from ZBrush and also um, using the Multimap exporter, exported the uh, color map, the uh, displacement map, um, and any other textures that you might like to use. What we're going to do now is when we're not going to go through the process, as I mentioned previously, of setting up uh, all the skin shaders with you know the rim lighting, um, the scene lighting, and all sorts of things like that. We're just going to discuss quickly about setting up the displacement maps so that they render in Maya. Um, and that's it really. I've, if you go to my site, antcgi.com, go to the tutorial sections, there's links to all sorts of other tutorials that I've done in the past which do cover all these other areas. So feel free, if you want to take this uh, lesson a bit further, to go and look at those videos and see how you can do that. So we have our character before us, as I say, I've exported all the geometry, brought it into Maya, um, adjusted the position of everything, just so that it's all set up roughly how I'd like it, so that I can start playing around with shaders and the lighting and rendering and all that sort of stuff. Um, so for now, let's just do a quick render and see how things are looking. Go to our render view. Render the main camera. And we'll pretty much be just looking at what we're looking at in front of us here. So that's pretty much the same. It's very flat. There's no surface detail on the face or anything. Um, so I'm just going to go in and assign a new blin onto the head. Let's close this down. I'm just going to turn down the reflection because we don't want the reflections. Obviously I would normally assign a you know a subsurface scattering material to the head and then work from there but this is just a demonstration for the uh, setup of the uh, displacement map. So here we have our new blend that we've apl applied. Now there isn't a option for piping in a displacement map under the actual shader itself what you have to do is click here to go to the input of the shading node and you come to the shading engine and here's where you'll find the displacement map down here so we can just click here click file go to the file node and then open up the actual texture so let's go to textures and we have our displacement map here so that's done. So now let's save that image. Let's render another one and just see if there's a difference. Now hopefully there will be. Yep, yeah, see already we're getting that information in from the displacement map. And I applied the blend just to make the surface a little bit more shiny, just so that we can see all those extra details. If we zoom in like so, before, after, before, after. So that's all well and good. We could leave it like that, quite happily just move on um, and start to play around with the other elements in the scene and setting up other shaders and the lighting and all the other stuff that goes on. But there is another, another level to working with uh, displacement maps that, which gives you a lot more control. So I'm just going to save that render there and minimize this down. What we're going to do now is we're going to add in another node on top of the uh, geometry here. So we're just going to go to Windows, Rendering Editors, Mental Ray and open up the Approximation Editor. And down here we're just going to add a new subdivision node, like so. And what you'll find is you will have this mental ray subdiv approximant one node now attached to that mesh. Now it's important to note that it's linked to the mesh and not to the shader. So even though, you know, for argument's sake, this scene, the head, the scarf, and the body all use the same texture page, you could make them all use the same material if you wanted to. Um, but you would have to set, 
um, ha you would have to define separate ones of these for each one, each uh, each ju uh, bit of model. So what does this do? Well, this basically gives you a lot more control over how the surface of the model is subdivided and also where it's subdivided. Now, by default, the approximation method is parametric. And this basically is a global subdivision. So um, if number of subdivisions is one, for example, every quad will be divided into four quads. So if your mesh is made up of 100 quads, it will then be subdivided to 400. So everything is increased by a factor of four. So by default, you could just leave that at two. The whole model will be subdivided um, you know, twice. You could render your mesh. In fact, let's just uh, do a quick render and we'll give that a try. You know, and and that's all well and good. But the problem then is it's going to, it may add to render time because the model at the back is also being subdivided as well as the model at the front. And obviously we only set it to subdivide twice. So as you can see here, there's not enough detail coming through. We would have to increase that number to get this amount of detail coming through as well. And you're probably thinking, well, then why bother? Why not just stick with the main sort of displacement map? And you could just do that. That would be absolutely fine. But that's just the default uh, method. You know, you, there's, you don't really have to use that if you don't want to, if you're happy with the initial results. Another option is to use the length, distance, angle method down here. And this is a bit more complex. Um, what this will do is this will, it basically, it will look at what the camera is looking at and work off that. And it will subdivide the geometry or the length of the edges of the geometry, depending on what it can see and how far away elements are from the camera. So as you can see, this is a lot better for uh, optimizing your renders. Um, if you have it set to view dependent, which is what we will do, this takes things a step further. And rather than actually using the units in the scene, um, so an edge length uh, unit, it will actually use the pixels in the scene. Um, so let me just explain. Basically, you've got minimum subdivisions and maximum subdivisions. So that sort of clamps the least amount that can be subdivided and the maximum amount that can be subdivided. So that's pretty uh, straightforward. The length is basically the length, the minimum length of a, a pixel must be before it's subdivided. So if we set this to 0.5, a pixel on the screen has to be larger than 0.5 before it is subdivided. So you could increase that. So maybe it needs to be, you know, an area needs to be two pixels wide before it's actually subdivided and those details are added in. Um, and that's pretty much all we're going to mess about with with that. We don't want to worry about distance or angle. We're worried because we've got view dependent on, we're working on the pixels that we're actually looking at. So let's just change the minimum subdivision. So let's maybe say four, and we'll increase this to six. Let's just do another render. And obviously when you're working with subdivisions like this, it also depends how well subdivided your geometry is. If you've got huge polygons, Obviously, you're going to have to increase the amount this approximation editor is going to have to subdivide the geometry to get your details in. Luckily, this model here, if I select it like so, we've got nice, even squares. So if that we don't need to subdivide them a huge amount to get our details in. So if we look there, if we compare that with the one before. 
as you can see, now if you remember this one was just the default one without um, the without this node subdivision approximation node attached. Now with it attached, as you can see, things have tightened up a lot. We've got some some more of those subtle details in there. So now what we can do is we can come in and start to play around with this a bit more. So maybe maybe we want the pixels to be a bit smaller before they start subdividing. Maybe the maximum amount of subdivisions, maybe we increase that to eight. Let's just save that image and do another render. So that took 19 seconds just to render. So let's just see if this has an impact on the amount of time. If you are finding it's taking a lot longer to render, you can increase the length. Um, so it will only subdivide pixels, which, you know, larger areas, areas of pixels which are visible. So see, that was 27. So that's taken a little bit longer to render, but then we're subdividing more because we lowered the minimum amount of pixels and we also increased the amount of subdivisions. And you can just make out there, if you look down here, when I flip between them, we're just getting a subtle change. There's like a little bit more depth in that area there. Actually, you can see it at the top here too. And obviously, if we blow this picture up, let's say it's A4 size or A3, you've got more pixels on the screen, so you've got more to play around with. So then you could, you'll need to adjust these a little bit more. So let's just save this. Let's increase the length to, let's increase it to two and just see what effect that has. Just out of interest, just experimenting. So there you can see already we've lost a lot of that definition because any pixel which is smaller than two pixels wide, well any area that's smaller than two pixels is not getting subdivided. So now I'm thinking maybe we need to drop this down even more, maybe to point 0.1, just to get those really tight creased areas in there, you know, to pop and to, to get that detail. And as you, can, as you can see, it doesn't take long to render. And it's important to, you know, play around with this first of all, before you start playing around and getting bogged down with, you know, tweaking skin shaders and lighting and, you know, your shadows and things like that. Because while it's rendering relatively quickly now, you, you can afford to play around with the subdivisions and the length, you know, and the maximum and minimum subdivisions in the scene. You know, later on, when it's taking five minutes just to render a, you know, a preview like this, you don't want to be bogged down with tweaking the subdivisions. So this is taking a lot longer to render, and let's see. So we drop the length down to 0.1. So this is subdividing a lot more than it was previously, but I'm hoping we're just going to get a lot more detail to come through. So there, that took one minute 21. Whereas the one before took 27 seconds. And flicking between the two, I can see subtle details in here, and it may be that we have to we have to increase the resolution of the render now. You know, we need to step up the resolution just so we can see, we can get into those details and see whether we actually need to needed to reduce the length. Because, to be honest, if this render was only ever going to be this big, 849 by 1200, and I'm looking at it there and it's just such subtle details I wouldn't want to add another one minute onto the render time, you know, if you've got to factor in all the other elements as well. 
you know, we've got all the other objects in the scene, which are going to have to have this um, subdivision node attached. You know, we're going to have to play with, around with those as well. They're all going to increase the render time. So it's about balance. It's about what you can live without, basically. Like I say, if this is going to be ramped up to uh, A4 size, you're going to see right into these cracks here. So we're going to need to spend time adjusting the length, adjusting the maximum amount of subdivisions and the minimum amount as well. There may be areas where we don't need subdivisions, so we could set that to zero. So if we go back through, that's our initial one. So let's delete that one and that one. Delete the first one. So as you can see, that's what we started off with. And that was just using the main displacement uh, map piped into the shading engine part of the blin. And just by taking a little bit of time to play around with this uh, approximation node here, this subdivision approximation node, we've added in a lot more detail into this uh, into this guy's head. You know, and like I say, once this is blown up to uh, whatever size you want, this then gives you the luxury of you know, only subdividing the areas that you see and only subdividing the areas that you want by how much you want, just so you can you get the detail you want. There's no point subdividing the back of his head, increasing that render time when you're only going to see the front. So if I just flick between the two, there's quite a dramatic difference just by adding that extra node on. So that's it. I think that's the... Uh, I don't want to drag this video on anymore. I just, like I said, I just wanted to very briefly just go over the process for, you know, setting up displacement maps and just showing you that it's, there's a lot more to it than just piping in a displacement file. You know, you can take things a lot further to get a lot more detail out of your displacement maps in Maya. So we've come to the end of the tutorial now. Um, like I say, if you want to push this further, I've got plenty of other videos linked from my site which show you how you can set up uh, your skin shaders, your scene lighting, uh, get ready for rendering, even setting up render passes, you know, all sorts of things like that. So feel free to see, to watch those and then push this uh, as far as you want. Uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off and leave you playing around with this. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've enjoyed, you know, creating it. Um, I've liked working on something which has been a little bit different to what I normally create. Um, so that's me signing off for now. Uh, goodbye, and I will see you on the next tutorial.